Chargers. Touchdown, UCLA. With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Dyrude on the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, L.A.? This is Ryan Dyrod with the L.A. Football Podcast, and support for LAFB is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Guys, I know a lot of you skip past these ads or just ignore them, but this is one that will actually benefit you every single time you use this product. The worst thing you can do is get nicks, cuts, scrapes, gashes, anything to your southern region down below it's painful it's gross you don't want it so that's why manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer the manscaped engineering team spent 18 months that's a year and a half perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved lawnmower 3.0 and even better you get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code lafb at manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code LAFB. I promise you, your balls will thank you. What's up, Los Angeles? Happy Monday, beginning of the week. A little cloudy here in LA, but I see the sun breaking through. Welcome back into the Believe in LA Football podcast on the Believe Network, always on the LA Football Network, LAFB Network.com. Frosty Rucker, my co host. What's going on, man? How you doing? Ryan, I'm good, man. L.A., I'm good. What's going down? I hope everyone's staying warm. It's kind of chilly out there. It's brisk. It's not It's not northeast or midwest brisk. Like, my hometown, Denver, was negative 13 degrees yesterday. Right. So, but, you know, 55 and cloudy in L.A., that's, that's a cold day. It is a cold day. I have a question for you. Just yeah. a random question. How far does the Midwest go? So, it, dude, it's funny you say that. I literally, we were watching... What movie was I watching the other day? But they were talking about the Heartland or whatever. And yeah, I was like, "What's considered the Heartland? What's considered the Midwest?" Um, so essentially, from like North Dakota, if anyone watching can see my hand, down through basically North Dakota, like Iowa, Kansas, down to I guess Texas, if you will. So technically, like Colorado, Wyoming, Montana are considered like mountain. What? So they're not technically Midwest, but I think they are. But they're like, so, so what would be the Midwest? So it'd be like, so North Dakota, South Dakota, Kansas, all the way over to like West Virginia. It's weird though. I don't know. I Ohio, Virginia. Wisconsin. But it's not even West. It should be the Mid East at that rate. I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> or the Mid. It be called the Middle. It, it, yeah, it should be the Mid. I don't know why how it got the Midwest. It should just be the Middle. Neither. I've been like sitting here like for years. Like, how far does the Midwest go? Because what you're saying, the Midwest should be what the mountain is. It should be Colorado, Montana, Utah, Nevada. That should be the Midwest. And then the middle yeah. should be Kansas, Nebraska, Minnesota. Yeah, I don't get it. Bingo. Bingo. Um, yeah. So yeah. who's in charge of that? I, right? How long has it been like that? We'll just start yeah. with the mid, mid-America now. Yeah, mid-America. That's what we're going to do. Mid-America. So, but anyways. Uh, anyway, good show for you guys today. Uh, Trevor Trout played for USC, uh, Trojan. He is, uh, the founder of the elite media group is going to jump on with us, uh, talk about his, uh, career, kind of what went down and what his future endeavors are. So, uh, good conversation with Trevor. I know he's a guy you've met before and, uh, he's, he's a Trojan. So brother for life, right? Yeah. 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 It's just going to be a really good, uh, conversation to catch up. You know, a lot of people, uh, want to know what happens to these big name recruits or these guys that are on the roster uh, that never quite make their break on the field and what happens, right? What happens post-graduation? What happens during their tenure at school? Uh, This guy has an excellent story about uh, going forward and producing, quote unquote, uh, off the field. And um, it's going to be a great one for you guys to hear. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll get into that in just a second. Um, the Believe in LA Football podcast, as always, is brought to you by betonline.ag. It's .ag, not .com, betonline.ag. Uh, plenty of stuff going on with the NBA. What's going on with AD? Torn Achilles or something? Is it torn or is he just hurt? He's just, I mean, he's getting a scene of specialist in Minnesota, I heard, but we'll okay. see. Honestly, we cover a guy named Duran James, right? 
Mm-hmm. I think we're having the same type of syndrome things that happen. AD may be still growing. There may be something going on freakish with him that is the reason why he keeps having these little small injuries or just maybe sport. Yeah. Right. It may be sport and he may just need to stretch more and more acupuncture. Who knows what it is? I'm sure LeBron's gave him every uh, tip that's out there. Um, it's be interesting to see. Uh, it'll be a big blow if he's out for a significant amount of time to our team, mm-hmm. our team, like I said it. Our um, team. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you nugget. Hey, hey, did they beat the fight. Nuggets last night? Did they Nuggets win? Won. Yeah. Uh, I like their biggest uh, biggest loss of the season for the Lakers so far. But you guys beat us like three days ago, so we, we split the series basically. We'll be all right. I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too confident on my Nuggets this season anyway. We'll see, like, but, you know, shout out uh, to Big AD. Hopefully he's back on his feet doing what he loves, and that's basketball. So Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, head to bet online at AG. You can bet on those Lakers, bet on those Clippers who are what, like half a game behind the Lakers. Um, there's hockey going on. You got the March Madness coming up in college basketball. Uh, we talked about it last episode, reality shows. You can play best on that if you want to just do something fun and, and zany. Uh, yeah. and, the, and the online casino always open 24 hours a day. So head to betonline.ag today. 50% welcome bonus when you sign up. It's free money, guys. Free money. Bet online dot a g so all right frost should uh anything else you want to jab about or should we just jump into a conversation with trevor let's get into it. it's a pretty good conversation i can't wait all right guys hope you enjoy here's our conversation with trevor trout <laughs> all right la football fans really excited to welcome in uh the next guest on the la football podcast he is a usc trojan fight on i know frost is excited about this trevor trout also started the elite media group What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you. Go ahead, Ross. So, Big Trev, it's good to see you, man. Bright and early on this uh, Monday Monday morning. How you feeling? What's going on, man? I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I woke up this morning. You know what I mean? I'm looking around. I could be doing a whole bunch of things. You know, here we are talking, you know, going to class, whatever, just getting up, being active, seeing what the world got going on, you know? be doing a whole bunch of different things here we are yeah exactly I, I think that's especially with everything going on in the world right now so i mean how's uh how's just life been during this uh crazy time i guess we can back up to even just last year um we'll get into football and stuff later but just how you know has life been for you in this transition of uh covid and and still trying to go to class and be in school and i don't even know what classes look like nowadays it seems like for everyone it's a little different so just what what's life been like man i would say very different but, you know, it's just more just being able to adapt and move on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with football. It's just you get something, you just got to know when to react and what to do. You know, I came home, and, you know, we came with the pandemic. Same thing with you guys. You're like, you know, we get to sit down and just watch everybody else work. Or we can go get it done. You know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's why we're here right now, you know. And I came home. You know, I had, had, had that time off, and I came back. You know, things changed again. You know, I had to readjust. And you know what? It, does it get tough? Yeah, sure. But I'd say I'm in a pretty solid spot right now. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. I'm, I'm excited to hear about uh, your media group, uh, uh, just endeavors in general. You know, I'm glad you're safe. Glad you made it through this COVID season. Uh, I'm glad you're, you're up walking around making things move, man. A lot of people sit still, man. And uh, I'm just I'm glad we can have this conversation about production. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So yeah, man. Let's talk. Let's talk briefly just about football right now because I know it, it's been a tumultuous um, career thus far for you, unfortunately. And you know that's just part of life, I guess. As you mentioned, learn to adapt and and roll with the punches. And uh, you've gotten some punches, man. I mean, the injuries stack up. So I mean, how's your body feeling? And how have you really dealt with that? Because I know that obviously it's a toll on your body, but just emotionally and mentally. I mean, I've. I've had football injuries. I know Frost has had football injuries. It's it's emotionally almost more tolling than physically tolling. So how do you how do you keep moving forward and pressing forward and and uh, I guess keeping positive with it? You know, it's just more so just like telling yourself your head, like you know, you know, you probably still do it too, Frost. Like you, you ain't that that far removed. You're like, I can still do this for real. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what keeps you getting up. Like where you go run, run that mile in the morning because like you just you just can't sit down. It's like I can still do this. Like I still go to, I go stretch. Like I went home. Uh, I was going to, I was going to yoga classes, just trying to stay loose. So I'm saying, just 
you know, I don't play anymore. So, you know, just, you just not putting out that same type of outwork. You know what I mean? So you just, you got to really manage what you eat and what you're doing. And you just keep that small, the small habits that you had. But, you know, I mean, the thing that just stops you from, you know, just feeling bad that you, you can't do it anymore is telling yourself, like, if, you know what, if, if these other things didn't happen, I know I could still do this. Even when you're watching the games, you know, see all your other friends. Like, I went against guys, like, I, I know they were going to be pros. Mm -hmm. They are pros. And it's like, I can say, like, you know, like, I, I went against them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can say I, I've done this and I, I, was, I was capable of doing it. It's just things happen, you know, and uh, I come to terms with it. I've, I've learned to live with it, you know, and I'm in a better place now. I said I was probably back in August, but, you know, it's all good. Yeah, a lot of people focus on mental toughness and the aspect of football, and you, you're you not really allowed to be uh, in touch with your, your true emotions of it. And um, your identity as a person is linked to football, right? It always will be that way. You know, that's what made you a – get to University of Southern California. That's what made your name be popping out in the newspaper in Missouri. Uh, it's, it's those things like that. Football has got you to this point. And I'm sitting here as I transition myself out of playing sport. Um, you brought up a good con concept that you, you watch TV and you see the guys like, yeah, I think I can still do that. Or um, I got a series left, you know, if I can just get back out there one more time. But when you come to that point that, no, that's not for me anymore, and you move on, that's when you're really breaking down the walls, man. And um, I'm proud of you for doing that because for I know, sure, it's tough, you know, because you put, so to say, all your eggs in one basket to get to where you were, right, to, yeah. to, to have dreams and aspirations to play in the NFL and, you know, being All-American and being on the board at school school and you know I had the same things I all my goals didn't get reached you know just because I played past it there were still little things that I left on the table and I can't get them back but the positive note here is the steps forward and you doing this media company that's what's satisfying to me that you're not sitting in the same spot in the quicksand and playing victim you're making moves mm -hmm. in, you know and uh, I'm proud of you for that because it takes sure. people years and years and years to realize that, you know, that, I, that there's a new identity for me out there. There's, there's more for me and you're doing that. Uh, walk me through your media company, how that started. Um, what made you put your foot all the way down on the pedal and say, I'm going to continue to do this because this again is something else that you, now you're passionate about and you're going to put that mm -hmm. same football energy into it. Talk me through the media company. Oh, yeah, I, I'll get to that. But, like, you know, I, you were just talking about the goals and aspirations thing. Before I stopped playing, it wasn't even about – it got to the point where, like, with me, it wasn't even about, you know, just make the NFL. Cause I, it was like you, – you know, with the league, I, I tell people, we have this conversation all the time, if you, if you, can, if you can fit the A gap, you can get a couple checks. You may not be able to – may not have been no superstar in college. You may not be – but if you can fit the A gap, you can play for somebody at least for, at least for three and a half weeks. You know what I'm saying? But it came down to me. It was like, you know, I just wanted to just be able to help us win. You know what I mean? And whatever they needed me to do to help us win, I was going to be cool with. It. You know what I'm saying? And like, even when I stopped playing, like, it kind of got hard. You know, we had our, our new coach, um, Coach Vic. I was only on the phone. It's crazy thinking about that. But I was like, you know, I was thinking about, you know, like, who going to back up who if I'm in the death? He was like, that's my job to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. And it's like that stuff was worrying me because it's, you know, with football, like run, football is like a Fortune 500 company. It's like you come in, see all these people every day, top to bottom, not even just players, it's everybody. There's so many people involved. And you feel like you have you have a responsibility to those people to show up every day, good or bad. You have to go do your job. Like those people depend on you and you depend on them. You know what I'm saying? And even when you feel like you can't do it, it's hard saying, you know, like, I I can't give what I need to give to this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where one day I was like, you know, because they could see it too, even when I was walking out of workouts and stuff. It's like, they could see I was really, really hurt. And I was going in, I was rehabbing, I was doing all the stuff I, I needed to do. But, like, my back was really, really bothering me. But I just, you know, I knew, like, this is this is what comes with the game when you play it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I just, 
like I said earlier, you know, like when you go in that building, like you have a job to do. Everyone don't, everyone don't like the job, but you know I'm saying like, you know, like you and my brother, you know what I'm saying? And you, you trying to get to it. You got stuff you got to take care of. You got stuff you got to handle. You depend on me to do what I got to do. You depend on me to be there, to be at practice. You know what I'm saying? So like, so, so you don't get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Small stuff like that, that folks don't think about all that stuff weighs into that. You know what I mean? So you know, it was me going to my junior year, wasn't even about, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, like I want this and I want that. I want others. Like, I just want to do really well in my role and just do what folks coach me to do and what they ask me to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what it comes down to, though. You know that that's the defined focus on your craft. You know, you take your instruction and do it to your best of your ability and eliminate the distractions and other the other things. And that's all you want to do, right? You just want to. Help your team win. If they were telling you to line up at fullback, you're going to line up at fullback. If it was an extra tight end and a jumbo set, you would have did it. You don't care. You're there for a particular reason, and uh, yeah, that's, that's something to admire. How's the well, How's the back me, feeling now? Are you feeling better? Are you feeling healthier? Man, I do because you know it's like I'm not. Some of that muscles came off. Yeah. These nineteen by bo- these nineteen is biceps not going nowhere though, but everything else is coming off. <laughs> you know the muscle just. It just comes off one day. You look in the mirror, you're like, well, my shoulders stuff. They was looking like about two and a half months ago. But uh, you know, sometimes we just got that, that country strong strength and just throwing stuff around when you was a kid. Oh, yeah. Some of that stuff just gonna that stick. Missouri strength. <laughs> yeah, you know. Do yeah. you? I don't get you in trouble. I don't know if you officially announced or maybe you have. But are you, are you planning on trying to make a comeback? Or are you you're good. You're you're in a happy spot now and, and moving on in life. Um, it, I'm. It, it, it's over, man. I mean, it, it, it's over. And, yeah. You know. That's tough, but um, once you come yeah, it is. and accept it, I guess that's how you can move on, right? Yeah. But I'm in a good spot, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm still cool with everybody over there. It's also my teammates. It's also yeah. still, you always have that. You're chosen for life, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm man. A couple guys that got injured, and at some point, if – NCAA doesn't have anything that's going to protect your guys' bodies and stuff like that and those workers' comp and stuff like that because they don't consider it a job, which we do as athletes and, you know, doing something for the university and going, you know, yeah, we get to go to school. That, you know, that that's the gravy thing, but you're there to play football too and you're working really, really, really hard uh, for that. And then if you get injuries, who's going to pay your, your insurance when, when you're done? You can get the treatment now while you're there. But what happens when you graduate? That lingers. Yeah. You know, like that's something that, you know, I had to be a vested veteran in the NFL to make sure my health care and things like that were set up, you know. Mm-hmm. But if not, if you don't make it to three years, you don't even get that. So all those wear and tears, bumps and bruises you had in college, no support if it didn't go pro. You know what I mean? So uh, the thing that I'm, I'm sitting here telling Trevor, what I admire about him is that uh, – he has realized where he's at and he's moving forward. And a lot of people can't move forward because they're still stuck in this fog. Like, man, if I just do this or man, if I can do that. And it's like, no, your body already told you. It's, it, the coach didn't have to tell you. It's your body that told you this time, right? Your body told you you shouldn't be out there taking on double teams anymore. You shouldn't be out there doing X, Y, Z because it doesn't feel right. So, you know, it, it, a lot of things, and it's up here, man, you know, you, you, you have to realize and listen as much as you want to talk, you have to listen. And, you know, for me, something was going to tell me I, I didn't have, or I wasn't going to play anymore. It was either they weren't going to hire me and I was going to get hurt or, you know, my body, you know, something was going to tell me football is going to come to an end at some point. And for everyone, it's different. And you got to make an educated decision on what you want to do with your life. And you got to keep your mentals right, you know, and, Seems like my man Trav has, has got that down. Uh, there's going to be, I'm sure, you know, tough days, and you know, you're. It's a like I said earlier, you're you get a new identity for yourself. You know that football stigma of who you were, or not even a stigma, like that uh, persona of who you are. At some point, it has to leave, and it's like, no, I'm this. You know, it's I'm it's the better than that. president of this media company. I'm not right. football player. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's not because the thing is, everyone knew I was always going to have like, you know, just like when you're working, you're working. Like I had no problem. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm up in the media center doing my thing. Like I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice. I always I was with, 
when I'm in the football building, like I'm, I'm in the football building. When I'm outside the football building, I'm outside the football field. You know what I'm saying? But like when I'm here, I'm here. You know what I mean? And it was never about, you know, like I always knew I was always gonna have my other stuff just because like I'm a good student, I'm just aware of what's going on or whatnot. So like I I knew school school was never gonna be a difficult thing for me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I knew that they always knew I was gonna be taken care of. It was just, you know, I'm going like I'm doing football. It was just more so it's like man, this is still a thing I do. Like, I have all these other things that I'm still working on and stuff. But, like, football, though, like, this was, like, my main thing. Like, this is the thing. This was the first love. You know what I mean? This was the first love right here. And I never – it was more so – I never wanted it to – right. <laughs> that was the one thing I never wanted that to – right. That was the thing I never wanted that to be lost sight of. Did I have, have my struggles early? Hell, yeah, I did. But then the day that, like, as I got older, you know what I'm saying I went to my sophomore season, going to my junior season, it got better. You know what I'm saying I started figuring that stuff out more. Frosty, you was there. Like, it was like night and day between my freshman and my, my sophomore year. You know what I'm saying? It really was. You know, so I was getting comfortable, or whatever, and I knew. You know, what I'm saying like I was gonna be ready. I knew. I knew the plays. I knew where, where I had to be. You know what I'm saying like. When we went on trips or whatever, I was always going to be the first guy in the room. I was going to be always taking notes. You know what I'm saying? It's just I knew with the football thing is I felt like I had a role. And when you don't do it anymore, you know, you feel like you stab at other people in the back. You do. Even when you're not. It could be 100 people telling you, like, you're doing the right thing. But, like, you got to tell yourself you do the right thing. You know? Yeah. And... I had my elite media thing, and it was blowing up and all of that, and it was great. And even with all of that, I was still thinking about football, you know. And it, it took a couple months to do it. But like I said, I got out of it. Hey, Tre- Trev, what, something I feel like no one talks about ever. Um, I, I don't really even think about it a lot either because I was one that moved also. But as an 18-year-old kid, you know, coming from – you know, middle America, Missouri, and then moving to SoCal, the bright lights. How difficult is that? I feel like no one talks about that, but that's, I think it's a big deal moving from somewhere and coming out to LA and all of a sudden you're at the the center spot of, of America in a sense with how big LA is and how much the pressure is as a Trojan. Like how difficult was just that transition? Cause you talk about, you know, it was a night and day difference from freshman to sophomore year and people kind of brush that off. But I think that's a huge deal. I mean, you're an 18 year old kid and you got to adapt. Man, it it was very different when I first got here for me because just you know like I was I never had been so far from home before that first year. Yeah. It was man that freshman year it was <laughs> boy it was tough. You hear me? It was tough. It it was tough. But you know like I, I made my couple friends here. Some some still here. Some, some still not here. But you know it was more so you know my little hometown whatever like. Everyone like everyone knew I was going to play football, but I mean more so is people just excited to see like people going to school. Period. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Of, they wanted to get out of Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, like everybody, everybody don't get to go to college. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, that brings me to my next uh, topic, or I wouldn't even call it topic, but a thing to chat with you about. You're from Ferguson, Missouri. Obviously, everyone knows. Been very detailed of what's going on. Uh, for many, many years, not just what's been on TV the last couple, but many years. Um, uh, I'm not from there. I'm from Southern Cal, but I'm very aware with the things that you probably had to go up, grow up with, grow up against, grow up with. Uh, what do you do for your community now when you go back? What do you have plans to do? What's the temperature there? Man, honestly, just as much as I can, you know, like, I, I still, I so I have friends there, and I like I, I can be real though and say I can't, I can't rock with all the same people no more that I, I grew up with, and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like I got, I got, got my best friend Darian. You know, he he got, he got, he just had his second child. You know, and uh, he has a, a little house down the street to try to make ends meet. You know, um, I lost, I lost one of my good friends, Kyron, last year. Uh, you know, some people, like the ones who got to go to college and make it, like I said, I don't see them much no more, but just, you know, there's no reason really to go back home. There's just nothing there. Mm. You know what I mean? But, like, I can say, though, you know, 
when it gets to that point, when if I can ever go back and, and really, really do something that really can change things, I know I have no problem doing it. Will I always be there? Probably not. I probably won't. But that don't mean, you know what I'm saying, that like I'm going to be distant because like I know what's there. You know what I mean? No one would ever know. do that. You just can't move back into that same for it. Just there's nothing right. You know what I'm saying? There's just nothing there. You know what I mean? And hmm. it's hard explaining that to somebody who just ain't from that. You know what I mean? Like, and I can say like I have a lot of friends who like from the surrounding areas who went and, and made things of themselves, but they don't come back either. But why? You know what I'm saying? Folks want to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of people just hating, you know what I mean? And just mixed up in the wrong stuff all up in the, all up in the mix. And it's like, you know, you can come home, you can be cool. Like, I'll kick it with them, sure, for sure. But just being all out and outside and whatever and no. showing I'm, I'm with this and I'm doing all of that, and I ain't got to do all that, man. You know, I got a mom and pop the litter. I got to make sure that, that they are right and my friends are taking care of business that if I can help them, I'm going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. Uh, spoken like a true uh, leader. Uh, you, <laughs> you know better. You know what's good for you, what's not. Um, I struggle with that in my career of moving back home. And uh, I'm from Orange County, but the same thing. There was, really wasn't nothing there for me. You know, a lot of my friends didn't get going in life for a long time. So they were still taking the same laps around town, doing the same stuff. And I caught myself doing it at first, but then after a while, I was like, I can't do this anymore because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not meeting any new people. I'm not advancing myself by just coming back home and with no one else in my corner telling me to take that extra step or go do this or take that meeting or, you know, you got that, go to that golf event and get the, the business cards from these people. And, you know what I mean? Like, it takes a strong, strong person to, to know what's not good for them and, you know, not be distant. You didn't give up on it. You just know it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, right. I mean, I feel like, like this, like I got to leave for the betterment of y'all. That's how, you know what I'm saying? Like we not going to get better unless I go get better. You feel what I'm saying? This stuff you want to be able to bring back. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we used to have this thing, uh, FYR or whatever. Like, because I'm saying people have tried. Like, it's not really, I know what's going on on TV and all of that, but it's really a, pr a pretty solid place to live. It's just working class people, everybody's parents go to work, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people try to make it work the best they can. Some people stay in the float, some people not, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, people are trying, though. You know what I mean? People are trying, and sometimes it just don't work out. It just don't work out. Like you know, like my, my cousin, I, I got I got a cousin Sean. He actually he 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 in jail up here. He tried, <laughs> he tried the best he could. It didn't work. It just didn't work. He was falling in the wrong trap. You know what I'm saying? And there's never everyone wants to have something to blame. You know what I mean? There ain't always something to blame. Sometimes it just happens. Well, you're very fortunate to be able to get out of there and get some education, uh, go away, see some other things, be around some different cultures, uh, even though I'm sure that when you got to L.A., it was a big culture uh, change for you and a shock at that. But, you know, be very fortunate and blessed that you have been put in a different situation so that when you do return, it's a it's a, you know, a grand entrance. It's a, it's with a plan and a purpose to actually be the, the link that fixes it. And I think one of the things that like changed a lot for me though, just like growing up, I'm saying like we didn't have everything either, but like my parents valued education. Nothing went to school, but they valued education. You know what I'm saying? And they knew like I mean, my we got some really bad school districts in St. Louis. They're just not great schools. It's not necessarily they they're possible, but it's like mm. you know, if you cannot send them there, you don't. And my parents sent me to Chaminade, and, you know, that was a really, really good school in my in my area. And I went there, played there for four years. My mom worked two jobs. Dad's a contractor. You know, we figured it out. We made it happen. You know, I ended up being able to go here. So it all worked out. But 
goes back to what I just said, you know, just my parents being so big on going to school. You know what I mean? Like, this was before I even just started playing for real. It was just going to school, period, because they saw, you know, I saw them work every day. You know what I mean? Like, even when I go home, like, my mom, she cleans a little urgent care. Like, I, I help her go clean her urgent care at times, you know, going to work with my dad. I'm, like, at the age of five years old, like, I'm mixing concrete, quick creek. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm hanging um. I'm, I'm hanging gutters, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm breaking concrete and all this stuff. My dad's like 60-some years old. Dudes does that every day, working on your knees, but then don't. And, like, it just sounds funny, but it's like, I was like, I can't do this. I got to go to school. It's just, it's a reminder, like, I really got to go to school, bro, because I can't do this in 40 years. Man. Yeah, you get that opportunity to do something different. Say you end up having kids, and when you do, it'll be a blessed moment for you. Uh, do you stay on the topic of, you got to go to school or do you teach an entrepreneurship like something that you've gone in and give them something that you've started? I mean, I would do, I mean, easily you can do both. But it's like, you got to go to school. Though. Like, it's, it's just, that's how you learn how to talk to people. I mean, that's where you meet people at. That's where you, I went to high school with some people who were, I would say a lot of them were not, a lot of regular people. And a lot of irregular people, you know what I mean, who come from certain places, you know what I'm saying, have certain certain families that just weren't like mine, you know what I mean? And we used to kick it. I know how to talk to those folks. And it's like, you know, you, you don't got to like school. You don't got to love school. You can, you can hate school, but you're going to go. <laughs> you're going to go and you're going to do the best you can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, like, for me, I went to school and I'm not even using – anything I went to school for, but it, like you said, it taught you to network, to, to finish something, to, uh, you know, talk to different people and different cultures and different outlets. Whereas if you're not doing that, you're just not learning those skills. So I didn't necessarily take skills from like my mathematics class or different classes like that, but you take skills from just being there in that situation, in those rooms with those people and having those teachers teach you um, and, and you take different aspects of it. So yeah, I think school is extremely important, just maybe in different ways than society says it is. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Where do you go to school? Like I got to tell me they say, where do you go to school? Like people really underrate how important education is. And they just they think education is just about the classroom. But it's it's talking like worldly stuff. Like I'll use this for an example. The high school I went to is a, a national soccer power. I know nothing about soccer. <laughs> I knew nothing about soccer. Then I went to this school with a dude named Jack Lynn play soccer the other day. Um, Tommy Barlow, this dude who plays for, for the New York Red Bulls, he was like my mentor group leader or whatever at the school I was at. And now, like, I can, if someone wants to just have a small conversation, like they say they talk about the academy system, I could talk to them about this stuff because I know about it because when, when I went to school, I was able to learn about this stuff. I didn't know what lacrosse was until I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. This is going to sound funny, but my, my guy uh, – Jacoby Buchanan, he's my best friend. He just won um, the Loman Trophy for the best fullback in the country, plays in West Point. He's black. He played lacrosse. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, I start right. watching them, you know, and it was when Duke was really good. And then they had this cat, Miles Jones, who was 6'5", 6 6'5", attacking him. And he used to destroy these unathletic kids in college. I'm like, yo, what is this? <laughs> and I, I, I never, I didn't start watching. <laughs> and here we are. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, that education. Stuff, it's that just stuff too, matters, man. man. Absolutely. That's funny. Uh, sorry, Trev. Talk to us about Elite Media Group. What is what is this company you started? I mean, I know you on social media. You're big, like twelve thousand followers on Twitter. Uh, like, what's the emphasis of it? Did you always have a passion for media? Did it stem from a friend, a family member, or? How'd you get going? Just talk to us a little bit about this this media group. I mean, I always knew I could write. I never knew like what was writing was gonna take me, but in terms of just I would say sports. I really used to in high school, I used to take my lunch out and go sit by myself and go watch the herd for like an hour and a half on my break time. And I used to like I used to be like amazed by like I thought this show was amazing. Like I I used to really love that show. And I was like 
I can do this. <laughs> and when I was looking, I was like, I can do this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then I learned, I got to college, learned how to write a little better. So I, everything worked. And cool story. Um, one day, my my boy uh, Rashad Phillips, he went on, he went on the hurt one day, and you know he, he invited me up just to kick it, whatever. I think it was when um, Clay Thompson, he was looking for, uh, for for his renew deal or whatever, his mm-hmm. new contract, and Colin walks in, you know. And it could have easily been for anybody. Oh my God, it's Colin. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because he knows everybody that plays for us. Yeah. He walks in, they're doing, you know, the um the pre show stuff where they're gonna lead with blah 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 blah. They both walk in, they're like, Okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I look at him, I look at Rashad, I say, This is what you're gonna lead with. I say, You're gonna say, well, I'm Clay Thompson. I don't ask, I don't I'm not getting I don't ask for ninety, but I I'm one not one ninety five. Not 194, not 196. I done. I don't care who you need to send the money to. I need 200 million on the table. And the funniest part about it was uh, BJ Armstrong was coming on right after. <laughs> and I'm in there. I'm seeing the show. I'm watching. I'm behind the camera. I'm like, I just did that. This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the first times I was like, oh, okay, I can really do this. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. So, um, you know, one day how elite started, it's gonna sound crazy, but I was in my dorm. I was in the ball and it was summertime. You know the ball. Yeah. And um I'm just sitting, you know, I'm just I'm scrolling through. I see all the people I follow, the people I'll be playing and interacting with or whatever on Twitter or whatnot. And I was like, let me take some of the some some of the brightest black minds on here and put them all in a room and see what happens. I hit him off and say, hey, I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go do this thing. Tap in, check this out. And I just started just throwing topics out there and just letting them talk. And they were like, whoa, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is this is really neat stuff. You know what I mean? And, you know, we got to know each other more. You know what I'm saying? More connections were made. You know, some people, you know, they just a thing every day. It's a, lead, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? And, you know, in June, we officially started, like, our page or whatever, and, you know, print stories, all this stuff, and got a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz. So, you know, the right way we did it, though, is how you make the presence. So it was like, we were moving like we were a gang. <laughs> you saw it, but, like, we was going there, you know what I'm saying? Not necessarily bullying nobody, but more so, like, a, a we're here, you know what I mean? You guys have been doing this for too long. We're going to do it better than y'all. You know what I mean? We're going to be in your slacks every day. We know you're going to be talking about us and how we're doing it and how it needs to be done. And everyone wants to talk about, you know, this needs to be done this way. And we think, eh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing that's making a lot of money to do this stuff. <laughs> so I'll be damned. <laughs> you kind of look at me and tell me. Tell me, well, uh, I, I, I did this and I, I work here and you know, I, I have this friends with blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's cool. They giving you this to do something that I found out how to do for free. Mm-hmm. For free. Bingo. And now you're reaching out to my people to ask them how they are doing it. And I'm no genius at all, but I know what, what the people's value is. And mm-hmm. people try to, stick, try, try, try to stick a number people and you know for us who usually don't look like us telling us how much our stuff is worth and what it how important it is. And now, you know, we went in the pandemic, you know, you saw it like we learned a lot of folks don't don't know. They don't. And we came out of it and we won. Right. We all won. I got some friends like my, my guy Cole, he, he got he got a job at um he, he was doing some stuff at Brother HQ. You know what I'm saying? Like he got he got some work. My guy Pierce who joined, he just got a a, a job in the boardroom. That's great for him. You see Josiah, Josiah's out here putting in work every day. You know what I mean? Dudes are getting to the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So I can't complain. But like you can't say folks don't folks don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like absolutely, it's not hard, fellas. I promise you, it's not hard. Yeah. Well, keep working, keep doing that, man. You're. Uh... You're inspiring the, the the guys like myself to to venture off and see something and and finish it and, and put it through the process and 
uh, expand your mind, expand your reach. And that's what you're doing. You're expanding your reach. You know what I mean? It may not have happened on the football field the way you, you envision, but your reach can go way further with this media stuff. And you can, you know, you can have your hands on a lot of stuff that can be in a lot of people's living rooms or the theater rooms and all sorts of stuff all over the world. If you do this right. So, yeah. You know Where can I mean? everyone find it? I know your, your social page is at the elite media underscore. Do you have a website too, or are you all just strictly social right now? Website getting coded as we speak. We've been working on that for about, I think about eight months, but uh, I got my, my best friend, JT. He, he's a software engineer. My, my other, my other guy, Mike, Mike Oley. Shout out, shout out Mike Oley. Uh, those are two of my programming guys. They help us out a lot. They're really good, and um, it's going to be up soon. Love it. Keep it up, man. I think it's great. Uh, we, I, I think we, this is how we even connected. We did a little piece on you on our site, uh, lafbnetwork.com. Um, would love to collab with you something in the future. I think it'd be fun. We could do some cool stuff together. We're both, we're all here in LA trying to have the same goal, same mission. So um, let's definitely stay in touch. And we really do appreciate you jumping on and sharing a little about your story and, and we're going to keep following, man. So like I said, let's, let's collab in the future though. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. All right, big thanks to Trevor for jumping on with us. Before we wrap this up and, and Frost and I kind of talk about that conversation, I want to give a brief moment to talk about our newest sponsor of the LA Football Podcast, and that's eBay. Whether rare, dead stock, or the latest release, find the exact shoe, any sneakerheads out there that you're looking for. As the original sneaker marketplace, eBay is the place to go to cop a pair you've been eyeing. With eBay's authenticity guarantee, your sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional authenticators. A team of experienced sneaker authenticators verify the box, the logo, stitching, and dozens of other inspection points. Each sneaker also receives an authenticity guarantee tag that includes a digital stamp of authenticity. It seems to be the theme here, authenticity. And it also protects sellers with a verified return process. So for sneaker sellers out there, eBay has eliminated selling fees on sneakers $100 and up, making it free or to sell or flip your collection. I don't know. Okay. Your... Hey, there's a lot of, I know a lot of people that are big into this shoe game. So this yeah. is great. There's house flippers out there, but maybe you want to be a sneaker flipper. Sounds weird, but you know, you buy a, buy a new pair of Jordans and, and flip them for some more money on eBay. So go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. That's ebay.com slash sneakers it's the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection all right so shout out to ebay newest sponsor of the la football podcast okay sneaker heads and la football podcast now, are you a sneaker head or yeah kind of in a way yeah uh, i collected a lot of shoes i was a nike athlete so mm. pretty much anything that came up either my friends were telling me to grab them a pair or i was looking on the website so i got a, a nice little collection of shoes um Nothing too outlandish, mm -hmm. you know. I wasn't best friends with anyone over there at Nike in Oregon, right? Yeah. But I was a Nike athlete, so there you go. yeah. You don't have the newest Yeezys or anything? No, I don't do Yeezys. <laughs> not my style either. Right? I'm not really a sneakerhead. I got literally like three. I got like three pairs of dress shoes, pair of Vans, pair of Chucks, and that's about it. And I've yeah. had them for like five years. I just make them last. That's yeah. Just, but I do know a lot of sneakerheads, so head to eBay.com/sneakers. There you go. Yeah. So, all right. Well, yeah, that was fun. Trevor, uh, good conversation. So I'm glad we were able to get him on and get some perspective on what's going on with him and kind of get the, the other side of football of, you know, life after football. I know we've, me and you have talked about it, but for someone that career ended uh, a lot more prematurely than he would have liked, it's good to hear that he's, you know, keeping his head up and, and has future endeavors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the last time I had a chance to speak with Trevor uh, in person was at a football game and we spoke pregame we spoke in the locker room for some reason uh we kept ending up right by each other and having a, a couple words and um even post game uh i had a chance to speak to him and the last time post game was when they played iowa in that bowl game in san diego so yeah. i had a chance to see him then too and uh, he was just always talking about you know what he wanted to improve on and and different things and and, you know, we had a pretty constructive conversation each time of the things he wanted to work on and how he wanted to climb up the depth chart and be in a place to play. And, you know, he want, you know, he had goals and aspirations and whatnot. And to see him progress the way he has mentally um, to pretty much put an exclamation point on football and move forward, uh, how quickly he's done it, it's pretty remarkable because a lot of people that have that uh, 
been playing a sport or doing something they love for over a decade of of work put in to get to the position he's in and to be able to just re-identify quickly and move past it is like I said, it's remarkable. And um, uh, hats off to Trevor for, you know, getting that done and keep moving the needle forward. Yeah, absolutely. So excited to see his, his company continue to grow elite media group. And uh, once their website drops, we'll make sure to uh, push that out for him as well. So um, fun to get him on and, and talk about that. So um, but yeah. You know, good show. Thanks everyone for for tuning in. This is the LA Football Podcast. Uh, got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, for those draft fans out there, uh, we're planning on having all of the USC and UCLA uh, players entering the draft on the show. We've already had, you know, UCLA's got two, Osa right. Digizua and and Demetri Felton. We've already had them on the show, but I think we're going to try to get them back. Um, we'll not try. We'll get them back. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get them back. We'll get them back. Uh, USC has a lot, I think, uh, seven or eight total. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the number off the top of my head, but you know, Elijah Vera Tucker, Amon Ross St. Brown, guys like that. So we'll try to get them on the show too. Just talk about this process of entering the draft, which is, is an exciting time. So I think it'll be fun for uh, this podcast, fun for the LA football network and, and just fun for these fans to hear, um, these great players in LA and how they get their journey to the, the next step. Wait for that. We'll, we'll dive into that. We're going to continue to grow, continue to bless you guys with this, this good content. And again, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, subscribe to our show. Keep pushing us as we keep pushing ourselves uh, to get better for you guys. Yep. Yep. Please do subscribe. It helps us out. It makes it easier for you to find us. Uh, If you like prefer audio while you're commuting, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, all the podcast platforms, hit the subscribe button, uh, iHeartRadio, all those. Uh, If you prefer video, we're on YouTube at LAFB Network. Subscribe there. We're trying to grow that platform as well. Um, obviously on Instagram and Facebook as well. You can find Frosty's personal at the organic frost. I am at Ryan Dyrud LAFB. Thank you all for listening. Frost. Thanks as always. Appreciate you. Ryan. Appreciate it. Uh, it was a good conversation today with Trev. Good conversation with you. Good catching up. Listening to Mia uh, say good morning to us earlier. You guys were online for that, but I got a chance to hear her voice. So, Hey Mia, Hey family. And um, yeah, till next time. Yes, sir. Yeah. She likes to bless the airwaves. So, Um, But thank you, man. Appreciate you as always. Thanks all for listening. We'll talk to you guys all in a couple days. Stay healthy, stay safe. This is the LA Football Podcast. 